Right guys and girls, Mark Crossword here. Today I've got the Titleist T200 iron, new iron from Titleist, and we're gonna compare it up to the tailor-made P770. Two good looking clubs, two irons that are gonna to appeal to people who want the best of both worlds. So some help, some kind of level of blade size, while at the same time, not too big and trying to edge towards that kind of bladed desirable look. Let's see how they come out, if any are better than the other, how they feel, how they sound. Titleist and tailor-made. Now tailor-made in the iron world, I think in the P, right up there. So two heavyweights, let's say. So we're gonna present some numbers and also we've got a fun little game to play at the end as well to see if I can find out which one I would prefer. I mean, initial looks when I look down at both of these, next to no offset, same top line, same blade length. I mean, they are very, very similar in looking. It's the backside that has the branding that looks the most different. And if we're gonna go on kind of just shop appeal, I'm gonna say in gaming position can't choose, like they're both just really good. They're that beautiful combination of not too small, not too big. Like they're gonna be really desirable, I think, to a lot of golfers, these two. From this side, and I know I'm not buying my clubs from this side, and hopefully you aren't as well, looking at performance and those kind of things. But if they are very similar, it's things like this that might sway you. This one looks so much better. I mean, it looks like a blade from the back. This one has this funny, I just don't like this insert much on the back, even though it's one of my favorite title designs for performance and looks in gaming position. I just, this is so weird to put on something like this. Well, I think TaylorMade have nailed every part of this. So let's start collecting some data. We're gonna start with the T200. Um, I'm gonna try and flick between the clubs, three shots of each so we don't get any patterns. When you're testing, I say this in this video, try not to hit. 12 with one, 12 with another. And if you do do that, make sure you retest. Otherwise it's quite good to hit one with, you know, swap out over each shot or even three with one, three with another. So you don't get any bias of patterns in your, you know, good and bad batches of hitting. So the Titleist has this nice finish. It's semi-chrome, no offset. Fin top line looks great down by the ball. And it sounds fine, like good. It's got the word forged on it. And like I said, we're gonna look at the tech. The acoustics of this are just not the best out of their range. They're just not. Will acoustics make me hit target more or less? No, of course they won't. Will acoustics make me feel like I don't like the sound of the club then in turn feel? Possibly. If the numbers are great and it sounded a bit odd, wouldn't care at all. But you gotta remember if they're all gonna come out quite similar, and I'm expecting these two to be very, very close. There's a slight discrepancy in the loft between the two, which we'll talk about. I think it's two-ish degrees, as in the tight list is a little bit stronger, I'll check that. I think it's a little bit stronger than the tailor-made, but I'll show you delivered lofts. You know, if they're gonna come out similar, that little ticky feel might just turn you off them. Hit that nice, not quite moving back the target, but it's gonna hit a green. Yeah, I mean, it feels solid. It feels tightless, you know, brilliantly well constructed. I just think the badge is a bit of a mistake because it does make, well, it says forged on it and it doesn't sound like a forged club. It does sound more like a, you know, a cavity-ish based teched up to the hilt club. Uh, let's see how that compares to the TaylorMade. Definitely this position wins. I mean, that does just look like a blade from there. Again, from this angle, it looks pretty bladey, but not really any different to what the TaylorMade looks like. Uh, sorry, what the Titleist looks like. See, now this one does, it sounds and feels how you'd expect it to. So where the tight list is a fraction of a surprise, this one isn't. And obviously it's up to you to decide if it's a nice surprise or not. I mean, this does just feel like a solid chunk of loveliness. Um, it does feel and look absolutely spectacular. I caught that a bit healy, but it's doing absolutely fine. And that's the beauty with this category. You are kind of right in that sweet spot of looking as good as almost anything and then offering hopefully a bit of help, which you probably wouldn't be able to measure. I always struggle to measure it in you know batches of shots, but you might see it over a period of a season. I'm gonna keep hitting data with these two clubs to see if we can get a good data capture set of a good few shots. Let's go and check out the tech, what they're saying about them. So 
Taylor made us saying they took everything that makes the P790, so like the more desirable, if you like, out of their brand, and put it into such a beast of a compact player shaped P770. It shares the same DNA. P770 punches above its weight class. This more compact player design has no problem keeping up with the heavy hitters, delivering explosive power. Bang, bang, explosive. Forge performance and forgiving power, hollow body construction, ultra thin, ultra thin face design to enhance field distance and forgiveness, the through slot, speed pocket, and progressive ICT are engineered to protect full speeds across the face and improve playability. The P770 is forged from the same DNA with hollow body construction, speed foam, and advanced tungsten weighting for a precise CG placement. Players shaping, hollow body speed foam, through slot speed pocket, and then inverted cone technology, which they've used for a long time again, trying to protect off center hits. So the T200 is a tall distance iron. So again, they're saying the same thing really, tall to try and inspire you and then distance to try and sell to you. Improved sound and feel benefits, they're saying, I, I wouldn't agree with that. Players prefer to shake totally, precision distance control. Features D18 density tungsten, so they put denser tungsten in this one, both of them obviously have tungsten in. New max impact technology, so similar to the cone technology that Taylor made are boasting about. Multi material body enhanced the muscle plate forged faced insert from the, T the Titus T200. The narrative on those two clubs is almost exactly the same. I mean, it is pretty much exactly the same tungsten forged face. Well, this claims hollow body, but you know, this is, this is hollow in here. Um, and that doesn't surprise me because they're trying to sell to the same batch of people. They're trying to sell tour, the word tour, you know, look at a club, what you see, good players hit, but then with distance as well. The biggest difference I actually see with these two irons is here. A seven iron T231 degrees in the T200. Seven iron in the P770 is 33 degrees. Two degrees difference in loft. So let's see if that'll come out from the testing. So similar, aren't they, in tech? Why they've got two degrees different lofts, I think that's so much to do more with the ecosystem, if you like, they're producing amongst all their other clubs to try and fit in and blend in ideas. Because sometimes in the review, I get people say, oh, why don't you try exactly the same loft for loft? Well, if you try exactly the same loft for loft, you're gonna see, like I've said on a lot of occasions, the exact same club come out. These two clubs are what you would compare, what people will go into shops and, and look at numbers. And these are the difference, hopefully, you might find if you've got a decent data set from not just the technology, but from the fact that they've got different lots as well. Should we look at these numbers? So if we look at the two shots, green here is the tight list, just pushing a fraction further. Both got the same shot shape. A left and right dispersion is very similar, slightly tighter batch, short and long, you can see here with the tight list, but like so similar. That's gonna be my variance more than anything else. So if we address that loft difference, there it is. I'm delivering 25 degrees with the T200 and 27 with the P770. I am delivering slightly different lofts. Head speed pretty much exactly the same with the two clubs. The loft is different. Face angle pretty much the same. Path the same. Angle of attack pretty much the same. So my delivery with both those clubs is pretty much identical. It's that static loft that shows through. And how does that show through in the ball data? Well, how you would expect five, six, seven, eight yards further on average for the two clubs. But look at the standard deviation of the bottom one, P770. Only one yard standard deviation with the T200. This is 20 shots with each club. Like I can't keep hitting many more. It's 40 irons hit. This is just a much tighter batch. So these are getting up to well, they're dropping down to 161 uh, one, one and getting up to 169 and this dropping down to 172 and getting up to 174. That difference in delivered loft is showing through here. The only bigger variance that's showing through is me, here to here, the standard deviation. Again, a number I see so many people not looking at. Be careful reading your averages. Slightly higher spinning in the P770 compared to the tightest in the 5.1, but remember they're not the same loft. So you will get a different deflection, different amount of spin. Also my variance in different um, strikes as well. We'll show that through a fraction, but saying that, I mean the higher strike with the P770 and spinning a bit more. So if it's like really spin control, you don't want to go too low, you might be edged towards the P770. If you are not afraid of taking a bit of spin off, you might go down to the T200. So there's seven irons I'm hitting. Outside that's going to spin around 6,000. If you give me a more standard lofted club with more bladed properties, I would spin that up near 7,000. So they're spinning exactly where I'd expect those lofts to spin from a mat. 
and then it's on the clubs. And then you see the jump in the ball speed because I, the tight list you can see is just one standard deviation, short, long, one yard. Um, it's going to be more consistent batch of strikes. Let's play a little game and see if I can make a choice between the two. Where are you at the minute? Post comments down below, seeing what you see at the minute. Where would you go? Would you go here or would you go here? I'm struggling. I, I, I like both. I probably would go with the extra distance potential of that coming from the lower loft. It's not tech, it's not tungsten, it's not slot, it's got less loft on it. If I was going purely on shop appeal, I would go with the tailor made. Um, this is just in, it's edging towards where I feel I want my irons to go at the minute. I mean, I'm using power bat, so I'm obviously moving away from this design of club. But if I was coming back here, I would find it really hard. That annoys me but the numbers are good. This is all over good. I could get this one bent a degree stronger. There you go, if I was going to obtain it. Let's see if they come out any different on the game. Best of three then. 160, but it's 12 yards elevation uphill. So this is a 172 shot. So it's a decent shot with this one and a really good shot with the tailor -made. So in effect, the tight list has maybe a slight advantage, but let's see if that plays out. If that does come out really clearly, I'll move the I can move forward a little bit on the tee. Who's going to hit closer? What do you reckon? So I'm going middle of the green. You see the pin tucked on the right and I've pretty much hit the line. No problem getting back there with this club. So I can take a little bit off with the tight list. So in theory, I reckon the tailor-made will be on the money. Again, I struck that well. I think it felt good here. In and out with the sound. Right, Taylor made I'm going to go middle of the green again, so I'm going to go closest to the line in effect here. Oh, I've pulled it. I struck that really good. And again, you can see that, I mean, that's getting up there with a tight list. So the tight list goes one up there, but that was purely my variance more than anything else. That wasn't anything to do with the club. That was a pull to a pretty neutral shot. Out of the two, the Taylor made just felt nicer then. 1-0 uh, to the tight list. Let's go with the tight list first again. This time I'm going to go right at the flag, so we're going to aim up the right, which I would never really do if I was playing, to be fair. I would keep it in that line and variance it more towards the flag, hopefully. So I've just given it a little bit more of an easy one, tried to slide it a bit more. That's a really nice shot. No problem making the distance. How close or far away is that one? That is 27 foot nine inches. From that distance, I'll take that every time. This hole's gonna play for the members at this club above par. I wonder what it plays on the PGA Tour actually. I would guess it plays at like 3.2 at a guess. So take that every time. Good shot, tight list. Right, Taylor made. let's try and get my little slide, not that little pull. Again, felt nice and it's the tight list is winning if we can call that a win there I mean they are so close to each other I actually prefer the feel of the tailor-made 37 foot 10 foot away more but that felt much nicer right 2-1 to tight or 2 nil to tight let's see if I can get one sticking in there a little bit closer with this tailor-made come on yeah not a bad shot Go on, keep feathering. Yeah, I'll take that all day long. You can see as we come onto the course as well, that distance that we saw on the um, static dry fit, if you like, where you've got to be so careful. I am not changing the color of the clubs here. And you can see, I mean, the tightest ones are pushing maybe a little bit further, but they're all in my tolerance of dispersion. Ugh. I just don't think you see these numbers come out on a real environment on the course. So that last one was 22 foot. Let's just do the tight list to finish. Oh, that's a skank. Skank ball that might get away with it. Will it make it? Oh, look at that. That's probably the closest and it's the worst hit. Golf. 11 yards, so not quite. I'm seeing two very much the same clubs. Oh, I can't pick. Feels a little better. Prefer the loft makeup of this, but that's pure luck on the ecosystem of the two brands of where they fit their clubs. I could get that bent a little bit stronger if I really desired it. Just two really good clubs. Which one would you go for? I honestly cannot pick that. I think you'd go with Brand Alliance and it might even come down to the backside because the numbers are doing exactly what comes out of them. Just two very well made clubs. Let me know down there below. Are you thinking of new irons? If so, which ones are you going for? Are these two on the hit list? And if they are, let me know how you get on. Thanks for watching.